Hi, I'm John Kilpatrick, a principal and senior technical director here at RWDI. I'm here in one of our world-renowned wind tunnels to talk to you about how you can use the results of your wind tunnel studies to shape your designs. The best wind engineering firms are truly collaborative. We'll answer all of your questions and even ask some of our own. In some cases, data can be reviewed in real time in the wind tunnel, allowing you to modify and optimize your design as you go. Based on your test results, there are key questions that you may want to ask. For example, are the predicted design wind loads for the structure in line with expectations? Are they low or are they high? If they're low, which is often the case, why are they low? And is there a minimum design wind load that you need to consider for your structure? If the loads are high, what's caused that? Is it buffeting from surrounding buildings or channeling through through the surroundings? Is it related to the structural properties, that is mass stiffness or damping of the building? Can any of those properties be changed to improve the response? And finally, is there something about the inherent aerodynamics of the geometry of your building that's caused the problem? And if so, can that be altered to improve the response? Related to wind loading on the cladding systems of your building, the question you may want to ask is, are the wind loads higher or lower than code? Do we know why they're higher or lower than code? If they're higher, where are the hot spots? Are they where we anticipated them to be? Is there a need to mitigate these loads and how can we do that? Um, finally, there may be some safety issues that need to be addressed. For example, uh, with roof paving systems or even perhaps with furniture on exposed balconies or terraces. Regarding building motions, you may want to know if the motions of the building are excessive or in line with the agreed performance criteria. If they're excessive, what can be done to the mass stiffness or even damping of the building to bring the motions in line with the criteria? On the other hand, if the motions are not excessive, are there ways we could revisit the structure and take out mass, structure, stiffness, and maintain the performance of the building while reducing the amount of material and embedded carbon in the building. Knowing not just the answers, but the correct questions to ask will ensure that your design is structurally sound and aerodynamically optimized.